Hello, this is Twice Crispy, and you're watching Twice Crispy. Today I brought you 32 quick tips for survivors. These can range for the absolute beginner tips to advanced tips for people that have been playing the game for a really long time. So sit back, make yourself a cocktail, and check them out. Tip number one, look behind you when you run. This isn't to say that you should always look behind you steadily as you run because you're going to slam into stuff. Just, uh, just check behind you periodically to see where the killer is at while you're running. You definitely want to pan your camera forward and backwards and forward and backwards and get a good, you know, mix of that so you can be aware of what's in front of you as well as behind you. Tip two, wait at corners of gyms until you see the red stain. If you don't do this, you're likely to run into the killer face first, as the killer is probably going to be trying to play some mind games see, to force you to go one way around a gym or a loop. The best way to counter this is just with some good old patience. This also ties into looking behind you when you run, so you can stand at the corner of a gym, look around, and then see the red stain, and then make your decision based off of that. Tip number three, vault check window from the inside whenever possible. It can be fairly difficult to get off a good fast vault from the outside of shack on the window while you're being chased. This is typically a high skill level player move, and if you can't do it, that's fine. Just vault from the inside. Tip number four. 99 exit gates until the killer hooks somebody. If the killer is trying to bait a blood board in play, they're probably going to avoid hooking somebody until the gates are open. You also want to avoid the endgame collapse starting until you know everyone on the team is safe. Tip number five. Take a teammate to rescue someone that's being camped. If you go by yourself for a face camp or unhook, it's likely you're either going to get downed or not make the save and have to run away. The best option here is for one player to take the hit and body block while the other player gets the unhook. Tip number six. Break line of sight against mobility killers. Killers like Blight, Nurse, and Billy really need to be able to see you in order to hit you. As soon as they can't see you anymore, it decreases their chances of hitting you significantly. You can hide in jungle gyms or behind loops, or even something as simple as just standing behind a tree can really help you avoid getting hit. Tip 7. Combo perks for better success. Yes, Lythe and Dance to Me is a great perk combo because as soon as you fault that window, you'll get your speed boost, but you're also fail to leave scratch marks behind you. Hyperfocus Improve Thyself kind of speaks for itself here. It's a gen rush comp. You'll be blasting through gens, leaving the killer scratching their head, wondering how you got those gens done so quickly. Quick and Quiet with Head On is really good because you can speed vault into a locker, upping the chances of getting the stun off with Head On. Tip number eight, swap between spins and wiggles. If you always spin, the killer knows you're always going to spin and they can prep for that. And same thing if you wiggle. To go along with that, don't always spin and wiggle the same direction. If you're used to spinning with WASD, try WDSA as an alternative sometimes. It'll really throw the killer for a loop. <laughs> Number nine, play to take hits and chases whenever possible. Your team's gonna see that you're altruistic and they're gonna play just as altruistic to make sure you get out because you did them a solid earlier in the game. This is gonna be a big one for anyone that feels like they get left to die on first hook when the gates are open. Yeah, your team doesn't always wanna come back for that. But if you really risked your neck to help them earlier, it's a lot more likely they'll come back to help you as well. Number 10. Don't throw Shack Pallet until you're on death hook. Are you serious right now, dude? Okay, so it sucks to go down really early in the game, so why not throw a Shack Pallet if it's right there? Who wants to go down at 5 gens? I think the better question to ask here is who wants to die at one gen because someone greedily threw pallet because they didn't want to get their first hook state. Tip 11. Play more killer. If you don't ever play killer, how are you going to know how to counter each killer? A good comparison here is to look at race car drivers. Sure, there's a ton of us on the roads that drive all the time, but until we actually get behind the wheel of a race car on a racetrack, we don't know what it's really like. We could say this driver should have done something better to win the race, but do we really know what it's like and how to give advice? We'd never win a race against any of these professional drivers if we've never actually done it ourselves. The same goes for playing Killer and Survivor here. It's better to get that perspective so you have first-hand experience. Tip 12. Go down for someone that's on death hook. 
If someone's being tunneled out of the game, wouldn't it be better to go down, take your first hook, than let them die? It's better to go down for somebody than have you lose a teammate because you're not going to get out of the trial if you have three players at four or five gents. Lucky tip 13. Play base kit cosmetics if you're good at running. This is also known as playing baby survivor. If you look like you just started playing the game, it can be super easy to wear some base kit cosmetics and then run the killer for five gens because they thought they were going to get an easy down from you. Tip number 14. Do a gen, skip a gen, do another gen. The last thing a killer wants to see is three gens left on the map, two of them next to each other, and then one of them far on the other side of the map. Do a gen, then skip a gen helps prevent three genning. Tip 15. Stop running at intersections to confuse the killer. This especially works well on indoor maps where you can break line of sight from the killer and then start walking to not leave scratch marks and they won't know which way you went. Tip 16. Run Kindred during solo queue. Now this one kind of speaks for itself, but there's a ton of people that don't do it, but will also complain that they got left on hook and phased or died because no one came to get them. There's a strong mentality that, oh, because I'm on the other side of the map means I don't have to go for the unhook. Well, what if everyone's on the other side of the map, you're all solo queue, and nobody comes to get that person? Well, that sucks. Now they just died. Tip 17. Lead the killer away from the hook if they intercept your save attempt. What this means is that if the killer finds you while you're trying to get a save, lead them as far away as possible so that someone else can come in for the save and you take the killer somewhere far away so that that same person doesn't go down again. Tip 18. Speed vaulting a window from the side will make you medium vault it. If you want to get a successful fast vault off, you have to vault it from straight on. There's a small variance in the angle that you can get a fast vault off, but it's best to vault as straight as possible. Most of us know that speed vaulting a window three times in the same chase will cause the entity to block that window. But what not a lot of people know is that if you speed vault the window twice in a chase, the chase ends, but then restarts within 30 seconds and you speed vault that window, it'll block it first vault. The best thing to do in a situation where a chase just ended and you still need to vault a window is to slow vault it. Tip number 20. Killing yourself on first hook only hurts your team. It's not a middle finger to the killer by any means. It's a pretty uncool way to play and only hurts the team you're playing with. Tip 21. If you're injured and being chased towards a 99 gate, hide in a jungle gym until it's safe to actually go through the gate. This can give you a chance to heal in a boon or have someone else take a protection hit for you on your way out. Tip number 22. If in the event that you three gen, everyone should work on their own generators. The killer has two choices here. One is to take a chase with one of the survivors in hopes of downing them quickly. The second one is to keep kicking all three of the gens, but that usually leads to just a really slow way to lose a gen. Tip 23. Gens with blinking lights haven't been repaired yet. Sometimes it can be difficult to tell from a distance if a gen's been fixed yet because you can't necessarily hear it from as far away as you can see it. The easiest way to check, but without going all the way over there, is to look up and see if the light's blinking, and if so, it hasn't been repaired yet and you can go work on it. Number 24. All survivors have the same base stats. It doesn't matter who you play. Walking, running, vaulting, crouch walking, it's all the same. But this would exclude any current bugs that are in the game. Tip 25. Room temperature to slightly chilly water hydrates you way better than ice water. This isn't as much of a game tip, it is a life tip. But you know what? Staying hydrated will help you game better. Tip number 26. Survivor collision is much smaller than killer collision. So when you're looping tiles, make sure that you're pressed right up into the tile so that you get as much distance on the killer as possible. If you loop super tight, it's easy to get one or two more rotations out of the loop before you have to throw a pallet or leave the loop. Tip 27. Lit bathroom signs on Larry's means there's a gen in that room that can be worked on. This also goes for Gideon. Anytime you see those big metal doors, there means there's a gen on the other side of that. 28. Flashlight saves only work once the pickup animation of the killer is completed. If you do it too early, you'll still get the blind off, but it won't cause the killer to drop the carried survivor. This takes a little practice to get it down, but once you do, it's pretty easy to keep it consistent. The latest update buffed flashlights so that you don't have to have it frame perfect, but you still need to have pretty good timing. Tip 29. Murky regions don't stack. In fact, only one purple region can be used in a trial. Anything past that doesn't do anything and it's just a waste of an offering. You can still stack yellows and browns to get an added effect, 
but if you know someone's going to be throwing in a purple, just throw in a different offering. Tip 30. Split up on gens in the early game to get more efficiency out of your gen progress. Repair efficiency decreases with the more people you have working on it. The best thing to do is if you already see two people working on a gen together, go find your own gen and start progress on that. Tip 31. You lose haste after you throw a pallet. The best thing to do after getting hit is to just save the pallet and keep on running. This will put more distance in between you and the killer than it would to throw the pallet and lose haste. Lastly, tip number 32. Take hits for injured survivors when going to the gate. Form a little train, with the injured person being the conductor, at the very front. Every time someone takes a hit in the back, then the next healthy survivor drops back to take the next hit. Thanks for watching the video, and if you like the tips here, thumbs up or leave a comment to let me know so that I can make more of these videos for you in the future.